can talk. Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Trevor Israel. This is Danny Israel. We're coming to you from the Gospel of Jesus Ministries. And we're just here to clear up some deceptions, you know, that is going on. We have a lot of we have a lot of folly going on, man. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to the word of God. Yeah. A lot of folly. And people the, the preachers is, is telling the people that oh that you're going to heaven even the, the preachers them is preaching it you're going to heaven Jesus died on Good Friday he rose on Easter Sunday they, they, they go and they, they celebrate Easter they Christmas. celebrate Christmas Jesus was born on December 25th mm -hmm. all of these things brothers and sisters is lies they've been lying to us from forever yes. all of these are the gods that they, these people worshiping has nothing to do with the God of this Bible. Nothing to do with the God of this Bible. But yet when you go and tell people, I'm not worshiping, I'm worshiping God, um, Jesus, I'm worshiping God. No, you're not. Even though you may think so, you are actually not. Because the Bible says, God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's the way you show him that you love him. By keeping his word, doing what he tells you to do. If you don't do what he tells you to do, how are you worshiping him? He gave you his, his Sabbath day. He tell you, 76 six days I give you to do all your work. Do, do what you got to do out there. And the seventh day, which is everybody know the seventh day is Saturday. Yeah. That's the day that I set aside for you to come and worship me. But the preachers tell them, no, 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 you can worship God any day. Where in the Bible did you see that? Where in this Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, do you see any one of the, the disciples or the prophets saying, God said you can worship them any day? You, can, you can't find it in here. So why us, brothers and sisters, have the teachers them telling us that? And then you're saying it too. Ah, it doesn't matter what day I worship. Yes, it does. Because if it didn't matter, then why would God tell us to do it? Or why would he give us this? Do you have anything to say? Um... Danny Israel, Israel. And, and, and um the same thing but what bro, uh, brother Trevor Israel said um a lot of people um they have it in the, the mind that if they do it and not what the Bible says that God know their heart and so it's okay I hear a lot of that God knows my heart no he don't he ain't trying to hear your heart okay. yeah and and so um he t he tells you to do one thing but you do the opposite he tell you to do this you do that so which is it because you gonna follow what he says to do or you gonna follow what you think to do yeah. and God is not a respecter of person he so who you are. he don't care all he care is you do uh, you be obedient because Adam and Eve they disobeyed and so are you going to be like Adam and Eve and disobey or are you going to do thus said the Lord? And so, good point. with this lesson that Trevor Israel put together, we're going to clear up some of this misconception today. Yep. Yeah. The one with God fulfill all on the cross. We're going to see what he fulfilled on the cross. We're going to start this lesson out in Luke 16 and, and 16. verse 16 and 17. Okay. Luke 16 16 and 17. Brother and sisters, I encourage you if you if you like to get a you know jot down some of these um scriptures and that you can go over them you know in your free time. Or get your Bible and follow. Or get your Bible and, and follow. That would be a good thing. Alright, brother. Verse 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Hear that. The law and the prophets were until John. So if up until John, that was the prophets. How do we get all these prophets out here in this world today? Where they came from? One of the misconceptions. That's one of the misconceptions. If the law and the prophets were until John, John is dead. He wrote the book of Revelation. So why is people still going around calling themselves prophets? Go ahead. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man press it into it. And every man press it into it press it or preach it into it so they preach what was written 
That's it. There's no new thing. No new thing. They preach what was written, already written, by the prophets, the prophets of the Bible. Not these prophets who would call themselves prophets out there walking today. The prophets of the Bible. And the scripture says, inspired prophets of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass mm -hmm. than one tittle of the law to fail. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one tittle of the law to fail. So, let me ask you something, brother and sister. If God say it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one title be removed from the law or should fail from the law, how is it God fulfilled the law on the cross? Heaven and earth is still here. So if heaven and earth is still here, brothers and sisters, what is that telling you? Another misconception. That the law is still good. Um, let's go on to... you have anything to say? Go to Matthew, no. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, and we're going to start at verse 17. Matthew 5, 17. Into the camera. In, in, in the camera up there. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we just be like, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. No, you can put them here where you can look when, when, you, when yeah. you're done, when you're yeah. talking like oh, right, up there, right. okay. you know. All right, so Matthew 5, verse 17. Verse 17, 17 to 19. It says, Take not uh, that I am come to destroy the law mm -hmm. or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he did not come to destroy the law. The same law that people is saying is done away with. God is saying right here, he did not come to destroy it. So if he did not come to destroy it, how are you having some guy or some preacher out there telling you that the law is no good? God fulfilled it on the cross. He said he did not come to do that. Go ahead. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He said it again. Jesus himself said it again. He said, Verily I, 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 me, I, Jesus, verily I say unto you, yes. until heaven and earth pass. Heaven and earth is still here, brothers and sisters. I can't, I can't stress it enough. Heaven and earth is still here. He said, until heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. The book of Daniel is not fulfilled. The book of Jeremiah is not fulfilled. A whole bunch of the, the, old, the, old, um, the old Testament is not fulfilled. The book of Revelation is not fulfilled. So that means the law is still good. It's still here. The law is still here. We still have to adhere to the law. Okay, we're gonna go to Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter one, chapter one, verse seventeen. Actually, verse uh, chapter one, verse fifteen. All right. Okay, verse 15. Mm. It says, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. You hear what he says? Moreover, after his decease, yes. that he will keep these things in remembrance. Go ahead. Verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fable. So Paul is uh, Peter is telling you, hey, Paul is telling you, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. All of these make up things that these, these preachers out there are telling you. Listen to what he says. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. but were eyewitnesses. They were there. They were eyewitnesses. They were there with him. Go ahead. Of his majesty. Uh huh. Verse 17. For he. Receive it from God the Father, honor and glory. Uh -huh. When there came such a voice to 
him from the excellence glory uh -huh. this is my beloved son in uh -huh. whom i am well pleased that's when god the father told him this is my son when he got baptized and the, um, the spirit of god come down in the in the dove and the um, spirit of a dove and say this is my son in whom i'm well pleased this right? is this is here verse 18 and this voice which came from heaven we heard mm -hmm. when we were with him in the holy mouth mm -hmm. 19 we have also a more sure word of prophecy where unto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Listen to what he says. And we have also a more sure word of prophecy. What is the sure word of prophecy? The Old Testament. If you don't understand back here, go and refer back to the Old Testament. That's why he said we have a also we also have a more sure word of prophecy where unto ye if you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a darkness place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Because when you get this word, that's when the, the day start rising in your heart, um, brothers and sisters. If you don't understand the new, you have to refer back to the old. And another thing that they have out there, New Testament Christian yeah. and Old Testament scholar. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, there is no such thing as a New Testament Christian or Old Testament scholar. There's no such thing. One book. It's one book. He said the old and the new. You have to go by the whole book. Half of anything is inadequate. You understand? And the law and the and the law and the testimony, which is the both books. The law and the testimony. We're gonna to get to that later on. And and I don't want to, to add, it says here, we have a more sure thing. What what is what what is it where he's saying sure? Me and him is right here. And we could read the word. Mm -hmm. So when they say sure, the meaning is right there. We will we witness it just like we're witnessing the word from this book. It's a more sure, sure thing. Word. There was right there with Jesus when, when all of this thing was happening. So it was that's what he's saying is a sure more thing. Sure word. Because it was there. It was no rumor. It was sure. Exactly. No rumor. No fables. Refer back to the Old Testament. So that means you can't get rid of the Old Testament. You can't say you're a New Testament Christian. Because if you're a New Testament Christian, how are you going to know what you're supposed to do? If you don't know nothing from the Old Testament. There is no such thing, brothers, as a New Testament Christian. Alright? Um, Actually, we're going to go to um, Isaiah. Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20 reads, To the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. You just mentioned that. I just mentioned it. The law is in the old book. The testimony is the new book. To the law and the testimony. Listen. And and like uh, 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 Brother Israel just said, The law started here and the prophets testify of the law. Of the law. Okay. It says, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Listen to what the book says. Actually, the, it said the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So guess what? The pastors and the teachers who is telling people that the law is no good, the book is telling them there is no truth in them. There is no light in them. So why are y'all following somebody who ain't got no truth in them? Why are y'all following somebody who ain't got no truth in them? The prophets teach the Old Testament and the disciples is the one them that testify of what the prophets wrote. And and what is what is opposite of light? Darkness. Darkness. So if they don't have this light, they have darkness. And who rules the darkness of this earth? The devil, none other than the devil himself. He said, you are of your father, the devil. Understand? Wow. Go to Psalms 111. Psalms 111. And we're going to read verse 7 to 9. Psalms 111. Brothers and sisters, stop following man. And you know, you know the thing is, the reason why 
people are following what them preachers and teachers are saying is because they don't want to do right. No. They, they don't want to do right. So they like what the teachers, the, the, the preachers, they be saying. If the preacher tell them stop eating pork, they're not going to go back to that church. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what, what they going to say? The preacher tell them, oh, all you got to do is pray over it. Yes. And you can eat it. Yes. The, if the preacher tell them, hey, God said he will kill you mm -hmm. for eating that stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. and, and and what is what is the, 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 new law, the new law that they talk about? Do as you will. Do as you will. Do what you feel. What you, what you, 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 do what you want with your with your body. Do as you will. But the Lord say your body is not yours. It's not yours. This temple belongs to Him. It's the temple of God. Verse seven. Verse seven says, "The work of His hands are very va verily verity, verity and judgment. Mm -hmm. All His commandments are sure. All His commandments are sure. Listen what it says in the next. Eh? They stand fast." forever and ever and are done in truth and upright uprightness they, they stand fast forever and ever so if he said the commandments are sure and they stand fast forever and ever what forever and ever mean there's no end ever and ever brothers and sisters you tell me what forever and ever mean if the commandments are sure and they stand fast forever and ever what does that mean you can't get rid of them. No matter how you try to run from them, you cannot get rid of the commandments. They did not hang on the cross with God. Go ahead. Verse 9. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. He has commanded. He has. Wow. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. And that name, brothers and sisters, is none other than Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ. None other than Jesus the Christ. It's forever. His commandments is forever. Let's go to John 14. John 14, and we're going to read one verse, 15. John 14. I can't understand. People don't realize what they just be saying, you know. You, you know that? Yeah. So if they're saying, hey, the commandments, God did away with that mm -hmm. on the cross. Mm -hmm. No, why when somebody do wrong, why are you saying that they did wrong? <laughs> right. Huh? Yeah. Why are they saying somebody did wrong? Did wrong. If the commandment is if, if, if the commandment is good, that means I ain't doing I ain't doing nothing wrong. I doing nothing wrong. So how can somebody do something, do anything wrong yeah. if they're saying that God yeah. took care of so, everything on the cross? Right. That means no matter what I do, it's already taken care of. Yes. And so I, I can kill, I can steal, I can rob. I can sleep with your wife. I can sleep with your wife. And I won't I, I won't go in the lake of fire. And I'm all right. Yeah, I won't be judged. If God took all of it on the cross. So that don't even make sense. It don't even make sense. No. So this this is John 14 and verse 15 and it says if ye love me so listen carefully it said if ye love me not me no if you Jesus. hate me <laughs> if you hate me no if you love me if you hate me if you love me if you don't like me if you love me if you like me if you love me if you love me what you have to do keep my commandments oh my god with a s at the end not commandment Commandments, all of it. Oh my gosh! Jesus said, "If you hate him." No, he said, "If you love me." If you love me, keep my commandments. So, if you don't keep God's commandments because you say it's hung on the cross, you hate God. Yeah. You hate him. Read that one. Verse 21. Uh, John 14 and verse 21 says, He that hath my commandments, he said again, my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that love me. <laughs> he it is that hate him. He is he that love me. So Jesus said, He that keep my commandment, he's the one who love me. So if you don't keep his commandment, I'm asking you again, 
If you're not keeping his commandment, what are you doing? You don't love God. You don't love him. And you say that you love him, but you don't love him. But they will Jesus you to death. Yeah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. I got Jesus on my mind. And, and, and but they don't do nothing that he, that he tell them to do. And another thing that is a misconception, what, what they say, he's my personal savior. Per personal savior. We get that a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm talking to a sister out there and I'm telling her, hey, yeah. sister, you're not supposed to be doing this. Yeah. That is wrong. It's in the Bible. Well, I have my, my, my own personal relationship with, 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 with my God. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have your own personal relationship with your God. With your God, not the God of this Bible. Right. God, though, is no respect a person. He don't care who you are. If you're a woman or you're a man, if you're white or you're black, if you're Chinese or Asian, he don't care. If you do what he tells you to do, he will do what he says he's going to do. If you don't do what he tells you that to do, then he's not going to do what he says he's going to do. Actually, he's, he's, he's going to do so many <laughs> things he says he's going to do. <laughs> like the lake of fire, for once. <laughs> Meaning, you know, he will say, "Well, hey, I will give you, I will bless you in abundance. I yeah. will give you this. Yeah. I will, I will be your keeper. Yeah. If you don't do what, he, what, what you're gonna do, God will not do that. Yeah. Because he, he, you only get these things predicated on if you do what God tells you to do. Like following these commandments. Like following his commandments, keeping his Sabbath days, keeping yeah. his feast days. That he say you have to keep forever. Yeah. All right, brothers and sisters. And finishing it, this, it says, right. "And he that love me, loveth me." shall be loved of my father uh -huh. so if you love jesus christ then the father will also love you if you do what he tell you to do if his you, commandments yes not the one that you hung on the cross but the one that is in this book and then hear what he says he and then he says and i will love to him i will love i i will love him and i will manifest myself to him yes. exactly so he will manifest himself to you so he will show you his word he will give you his word he will give you what he will feed you spiritual food so if you want him follow his commandment wow let's go to first john first john 2 first john 2. brothers and sisters you know something i ain't nobody neither am i i'm nobody and if i can read this book if I can read this book, how in the world that these pastors and these ministers and teachers who say they went to school of theology, seminary school, seminary school, how are they not understanding this word? Yes, and they got all these titles: PhD, PhD, this, doctor, doctor, this. this and Another thing: how yeah. are you a doctor if you if you're a pastor? Yeah. Who are you operating on? Yeah, uh, I thought they're supposed to be curing ailments. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's, it's it's a miracle, man. Yeah, it's ridiculous. How can the one them who say they go to doctor school, uh, school yes, of theology, yes, don't understand this book yes. that they go to? And I never been to, to school. Uh, yeah, I never been to. A, I, I ain't, ain't nobody. A doctor, I ain't nothing. How am I? How, how can I read the word and understand the word? So that is only telling me something. These people are purposely misleading people. They are purposely misleading people. So first John we're going to go First John, First John two. We're going to read three to seven. First John two, three to seven. When you're ready, you can go ahead, bro. First John two, three to seven. Verse three, and hereby we do not. We do know. We do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. This is way after Jesus died, rose, and went back to the Father. Sitting on the right hand. And sitting on his right hand. And he's, this book is still talking about his commandments. Yeah. He, he died, rose, and went back and sitting on the right hand of his Father. And this book is still talking about his commandments. So... How is the commandment lost on the cross? Yeah. How is that? Listen what it says. Go ahead. Verse, verse 3 again. Verse 3. And hereby we 
we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. We know that we know God if we keep his commandments. So if we don't keep God's commandment, we don't know. All of we that saying we love Jesus, we love Jesus, it's a lie. We don't know. It's a lie. It's a lie. Go ahead. He that said, uh -huh. I know him uh -huh. and keep not his commandments. Is a what? A liar. You're telling the truth. No, he's a liar. He's a prince charming. He's a liar. He that say that they know me and keep it not my commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. So all the preachers that are up there, and the teachers and the leaders and the prophets and the rabbis and whoever else you want to call yourself, Dr. This and Reverend This and Father This, if you don't keep God's commandment, all you all are the children of the devil. It's simple as that. You say, he that said that they know me and keep it not my commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. I didn't write this book. But Israel, they did not write this book. I'm just reading and telling you what the book says. Yep. That's what John said. Right? Yep. I'm telling you what the book says. So, you go ahead. Okay. Verse 5. But who's... And brother... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead verse so, 5. Verse 5, it says, But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Perfected. So, he's, he says in verse 4, he that say that they know him and keep it not his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keep it his word, the same word that we are saying that is lost on the cross when Jesus got crucified. Yeah. Whosoever he, he that say that he whosoever that keep it his word in him verily is the love of God perfected, whereby we know that we are in him. Right? Verse six. He that said he abided in him art himself also so to walk even as he walked so that's why jesus says be he perfect as i am perfect mm -hmm. walk as i walk yeah because walk the perfect. thing that because that's why jesus came mm -hmm. jesus came to do this thing to show us that we can do it we can do it if he can walk in the flesh the way he walked yeah he's showing us that we can do it too yes you understand mm -hmm. so the the things that we do out there i myself we're not, none, none is perfect. No. The thing that we do out there is the things of the flesh. You understand? Uh -huh. God came, Jesus came to show that we can walk perfect. We can keep ourselves from doing these things that we choose to do. And you he, understand? And he's the greatest example. And he was the greatest example. That we can do it. Yes. You know? Verse 7. Verse 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you. He said, I wrote no new commandments unto you. Brethren, I write no new commandments unto you. I wrote no new commandments unto you, but... But an old commandment which ye had hmm. from the beginning. <laughs> the old commandment which you had from the beginning. From the beginning. The same laws that is in the book of Moses the is the same commandment that we have to adhere to. He said he wrote no new commandments unto you. Go ahead. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which we have heard from the beginning. So God said he wrote no new commandment. So a lot of people come in and tell you, oh, it's a new thing. What new thing? No new thing. Not new under Ecclesiastic the sun. 1 and 9 said there's no, nothing new under the sun. Nothing there's no new thing. So the commandments that we have to keep is the same commandments that Moses brought forth. We have to keep those laws, those statutes and those commandments. Because this is how we are going to get into the kingdom. Yes. How, how do we expect to get into a perfect kingdom with no rules to follow? Even on your job, a simple job. Even your, your job, if you pick up garbage, you have, a, you have rules to follow. Anything that you do in life, you have rules to follow. Have rules. So how do you think that you're going to get into the kingdom of God and you don't have to follow no rules? You don't have to follow no commandments. Where do you get this thing from? So the people them that is having the preachers them telling them this crap, why are you adhering to these things? The only thing I can come up with is because these are the things that they want to do. So when the preacher and the teacher tell them that they can't do it, boom. It's easy for them. Yeah. They don't want to change. Because the leaders and them is telling them it's okay to do. Yeah. 
Come to God as you are. Yeah. He will accept you any way you are. Yeah. Pray over this. Pray over it. Pray over anything and you can eat it. Mm -hmm. When God come, he purified everything. In Job, what, I think 14 and 4, 14 and 4 he says, um, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? How can you bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? You understand? So, <laughs> oh my God. We'll find that later. Yeah. <laughs> right, so. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? So how can you say if you pray over something, boom, God yeah, tell you don't eat pork. Yeah. He tell you don't eat pork. You have a table full of bacon and ham and sausage, mm -hmm. and then you go pray, oh Lord, bless this food. Yes. Do you think God is hearing you? The Bible said God hearing not the word of sinners. So if you're praying over something that He tell you not to eat, mm -hmm. you think God is gonna? He's not gonna listen. He's not listening. He don't even know you. Yeah. The catfish, he's not listening. He said, these things are smoke in my nose. Shrimp, he's not listening. Crab, he's not listening. Man, you can eat anything as long as you pray over it. Crab, he's not listening. <laughs> wow. Brothers and sisters, I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing. This thing yeah. is very serious. Very serious. It's very serious. It's life and death. Your life is on the line. You understand? God said, I put before you good and evil, life and death. He said, choose True. life and, and live. live. The brothers and sisters, this if the things that we are doing, we're going down the road of destruction. And and Israel, our forefathers did it, did it in the wilderness. We could change that because now we got the word right here in front of us and we can follow it. Let's go to 1 John 5. 1 John 5. And we're going to read verse 1 to verse 3. Brothers and sisters, this is. <clears throat> and in case y'all wondering what we're reading, we're reading the Bible. All right. The Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. So we're not reading a book that was made up or a book that somebody made. We're reading the Bible. The Holy Bible. All right. King James Version. We're reading the Bible. So, yes, these things that we're reading is in the Scriptures. We're not making them up. We're not reading from a copy book. We're reading from the Holy Scriptures. Yes. All right. First John five. We're going to read from one to one to three. It says. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, uh -huh. and everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him, also that is begotten of him. Uh -huh. By this we by this we know that we love the children of God. Uh -huh. When we love God and keep his commandments. When we love God and keep his commandment. Because if you don't keep God's commandment, guess what? You don't love God, right? You don't. Okay. Go ahead. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Listen, people. That we keep his commandments. Uh -huh. And his commandments are not grievous. We keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. This is after Jesus died. After Jesus rose. After Jesus went back to heaven. After Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. These commandments is still lingering on. Now, if Jesus had fulfilled everything on the cross and we don't have to keep these laws why are they still in the book after he done went back to heaven yeah. why are they still here they're here for a reason for us to do them oh man second john we're going to read verse three and then we read five and six. Second john verse three and then five and six it says grace be with you mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the Father in truth and love this is another thing I heard a couple of people saying that um God is the one that created this no that manifested himself and came as the sun. Okay. Because you know when they they see in the beginning God created, created. Mm -hmm. you know, is it and then in 
in John 1 and 1 it says mm -hmm. in the beginning God the word was with God and the word was God yes they think that is the father yes. who manifested himself and yes. came like the son yes so a lot of people don't believe it's actually two people yes. they think is God is the son yes and the son is God yes they're both one the same right you understand and it, it says you, it you hear what it says let me Grace, read it again go ahead it says grace be with you uh -huh. mercy and peace uh -huh. so this is both they're talking uh -huh. from God the Father uh -huh. see they separated is God the Father no God the Son God the Father go ahead and from the Lord you see you see you see the change here the one they say the Father and then they, they came down here and said from the Lord Jesus Christ. No, the Lord Jesus Christ the Father. Lord Jesus Christ the, the Son of the Father. You see the separation? The Son of the Father. If I was brother, brother son, it would have been me and, and him. him. So, the Son, the Father. But, that's what I say. I can't understand why people hold yeah. on to these things yes where is jesus right now on the right hand of the father on the right hand of, on, of himself on the father of himself the father so the, if he's sitting on the right, right hand side. of his father yes how can they be the same the same person how can they occupy the same seat <laughs> it's the same thing he's sitting here how can i be sitting in the same seat no it's two separate seats wow and then it says, in truth and love. Wow, wow, wow. It's, it's, this thing is... This thing it's is, simple. This thing is... It's simple, but they make it... It's not simple, man. This thing, it got to be hard. It have to be hard if somebody like me who is nobody can, I mean, read, can read this thing and understand. And these scholars yes. is twisting this word upside down. Yes. It's, 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 it's hard. It got to be hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you got some of them winning um, the, the, that, that thing they call Pulitzer Prize and uh, and all these different th these different acronyms. You know, uh, big statue, and they, they don't understand the simple uh, 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 verse. Simple verse. Let's read verse six. Verse six. And this is love, that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. You know they said um god the new commandments is god say love one another you remember this they, yes. they said the commandments is done yes the, the, book, the, the, the greatest commandment and the yes. new commandment yes. is love. love what did you just read it says this is the commandment that you have heard from the beginning from the beginning from the beginning from the beginning no since he changed the no, commandments no, no. from the beginning word for word it says from the beginning so they're saying that God changed the commandments. We don't have to do all of that. He said the new commandments is love your brother, love one another. Yeah. But he's saying this is the same commandment we had from the beginning. From the beginning. What's the beginning? From Genesis. From Genesis. The same commandments. Yeah. He told you he gave you no new commandments. None. The commandments, the same commandments which are what was of old, that's the commandment that we have to still adhere to. All right, brothers and sisters, he gave you no new commandments. And this love thing that they say is new, is not new. This was from the beginning. The same commandments. He took them off the, the, um, the plaque, the stone that he wrote over Moses. Yeah. And he put them on the inward part of you. Mm -hmm. He changed the method. But the message is the same. He took them off the plaques and put them in your heart. He changed the method, but the message is the same. Yes. Very same. We will see some commandments. Let's go to Leviticus 19. Let's show you that this um these laws. These, <laughs> these love thing was not no new thing. Le Leviticus 19, we're going to read verse 17 and 18. Leviticus 
When you get it, brother, go ahead. Okay, Leviticus 19, verse 17 reads, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So, thou shalt not hate thy brother. So, what are you telling you? You um, should love your brother, right? No, he says, yes, he said, telling you to love your brother. So, if he said, don't hate your brother, that means he's telling you to love your brother, right? Said, that's, that's right. That's, so, not, that's the opposite. So, love is from where? The beginning, right? From the this beginning. Is, we're reading the book of Leviticus. Yes. So, love is not no new thing. Yes. And, and, and then he, he says here, heart. Love is not a new thing. Yep. It's right here in the book of Leviticus. Right. So why are you saying that's the new commandments mm -hmm. that God gave? To love your brother yeah. as yourself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You hear that? Go ahead. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the new. That's the new commandment. Not hate. That's the old. That's from old. I am the Lord. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That as thyself. That's a new commandment. That's the old commandment from the beginning. My Jesus. Simple as that. Go to Deuteronomy six, and we read one verse. Deuteronomy 6, 1 verse. We're going to read verse 5. You see, brothers and sisters, from the New, the new, the new Testament Christian, they will know that this is in the Old, the old Testament because they don't read the Old Testament. They're New Testament Christian. So how would they know that love was there from the beginning if they don't read it? Yeah. That's why they don't know. Yeah. They thought it just started. They thought it just started. That's why they think it's a new thing. Yes. Because they, they don't read the old, they don't so they it. don't know that love is in the old commandment. <laughs> That's why they're saying it's a new thing. <laughs> the same, a this, new thing. The same old love. This new thing, new thing, new thing. Let's go to Ecclesiastic. Let's 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 divert for a little while. Yes. This new thing. Yes. Let's go to Ecclesiastic one, and we're gonna read verse nine. Ecclesiastic 1, let me see. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Correct. Read verse 1. This, this new thing that they, they are, they're talking about. Let's read verse 9 and, and go ahead. It says, The thing that had been. The thing which had been. Uh -huh. it, it was day before. It is that which shall be. The thing which has been. It is that which shall be. Go ahead. That means it's not going to change. And that which is done is that which shall be done that which is done is that which shall be done go the ahead same old thing and there is no new thing under the sun there is no there's a new thing under the sun there's no new thing there's under, a there's a new commandments under the sun there's no new thing under the sun read verse 10 is there anything whereof it may be said? Is there anything of which it may be said? So he's saying, can you say if some, something? If somebody come and tell you, yeah. what, what am I saying? See, this is new. See, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It had been already of all time. It has already been of all time. So if anybody comes to you and says, see, this is a new thing. <laughs> Don't believe them. Don't believe them. Because it's already from old time. And the there father is, is telling you. There's nothing new under the sun, yeah. brothers and sisters. You see, uh, you see um, <laughs> the woman walking down the street with them still at her? Uh -uh, it's nothing new. There's nothing new it's under the sun. It's already been way back already in the old been. time. That which has been is, what, is that which shall be done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 4. Okay. But sorry, brothers and sisters, we deviated. <laughs> We deviated from our lesson a little yes, bit. But we had to bring a point. But we had to bring a point. Yes. There is nothing new under the sun. Not. Nothing. 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 Okay. God ain't give nobody no new commandments. All right. We're gonna do the Deuteronomy six, and we're gonna read one verse, verse five. When you get it, my brother, go ahead. Okay. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. He didn't say love. Hate. He didn't say love. Hate. He didn't say love. He said, Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. 
So love is back here in Deuteronomy. Way back here in Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 10. We're going to read one verse, verse 19. It says, Love ye therefore the stranger. Love ye therefore the stranger. That's just like your, your brother. I was just going to say, who are, the, who are the stranger? It's just like your brother, your brother or your sister. Right? Go ahead. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Because we were a stranger in the land of Egypt. And brothers and sisters, that's ye was a stranger in the land of Egypt. That is us. Another lesson for another time. And also, we are strangers right here. And in we this are, land. But they, they, they don't know that we are strangers. They think yeah. we're from here. Yeah, because they, they don't know here. that we are the one who was in Egypt. That's right. So, as I say, another Not lesson for mm -hmm. another time. Nothing you wanted to sound. Right? Ecclesiastic, well, we don't did it already. Ecclesiastic. Yeah. Let's go to Revelation 22. Brothers and sisters, this is the last. Actually, no. Let's do that one last. Okay. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14, and we're going to read 37 and 38. When you get it, my brother, go ahead. Okay, verse 37 said, If any man think himself to be a prophet. If any man think himself to be a prophet. You remember you read earlier, the prophet was, till John was the last? Uh-huh. Or spiritual. Uh-huh. How much spiritual healer we will uh, uh, say that they are there let him go ahead let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord <laughs> but go ahead but if any man be ignorant which there's a lot yeah uh -huh. let him be ignorant let him be ignorant so if you think you are prophet as I say you didn't write none of this book he said let them be let them be known yeah. <laughs> let, let him acknowledge that the things which i write unto you yeah. are the commandments so he says here 38 and if, you if you're gonna be stupid be stay stupid. stupid my 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 verse actually that's it that's it no no 38 yeah Th but it, that, that's it 38 okay we'll go first timothy 6 and 14. Six, one, and two. And and Six, and two, and uh, uh, this this book, people think that this book you have to be serious, serious all the time. You do, but the word of of, of, of God is so sweet, it's so sweet that man. sometimes you have to enjoy this that, th th this word. That's why he's, that's why he, so we get punished. He said because you did not serve the Lord with joy. Yes, and all your joyful heart. that all your yeah. heart. Yes, joyful. So yes. you know at the same time. You can you can laugh. Yeah. You know you you don't have to be serious serious all the yeah. time, but and they it comes down to it that you know when you come into the word of God you know you have to do what does says the Lord. What does says the Lord? Yes. So you you can it's all in in fun you know yeah. what I mean it's all in yeah. faith but it just comes down so we just have to adhere to the word of the Lord. Yeah. And don't let nobody mislead you and tell you that the law is done away with because yeah. brothers and sisters. They are not done away with. Yeah, and the Lord didn't make us to be robots. And exactly, he because didn't, he look, didn't make look, no robots. And look how much our brothers are co comedian, and God gave him that gift. He said he gave gifts. He gave gifts. So we could have, we could, we could, we could laugh and 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 and, and enjoy, 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 enjoy ourselves at the same yes. time. He said, serve him with joyful and gladness of the heart. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna read first. We're gonna read um sixteen and four, actually. Actually, no. Um, 6 and 14. First, First Timothy. Timothy 6 and 14. Okay. All right. It says, That thou keep this commandment without spot. Without spot. Mm -hmm. Actually, read from 13. From 13. Start from 13. Okay. It says, 
I give thee charge in the sight of God, uh -huh. who quickeneth all things, who make alive all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, uh -huh. that thou keep this commandment without spot, unbukable, uh -huh. until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the who? Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You didn't read that until he was hung on the cross. No, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. That looked like it went away when he was hung on the cross. No, until the appearing. So it's, they're talking here about when he comes back to this earth. So if Jesus is not here yet, if he hasn't come back yet, how how is he his commandments done away with? That means we and, have to keep them. And the book says we have to keep his commandments until the appearing of, of, the Lord. of Jesus. Yes. So if we have to keep the commandments until he appears, until uh, he comes back, mm -hmm. how, how are they done away with? So that means that's another uh, a misconception, another lie. Brothers and sisters, oh my gosh. It says that thou shalt keep his commandment without spot and rebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to keep the commandments until God come back. That is how we are going to get into the kingdom. You, by you keeping his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, you cannot get into the kingdom of God. You cannot. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for you to get into the kingdom of God mm -hmm. if you don't keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if I have uh, this white t-shirt I have on, if there's a big spot in the middle, it makes it look look bad. Obvious too. So that's what that's what Jesus is saying here. Don't let anything corrupt, corrupt keeping this commandment. Let's go to Romans three. Romans three and we're gonna read one verse, verse thirty one. Romans three and thirty one. start maybe at 26 so we can get to 100. I say at this time righteousness and might be just. Actually you could start at 22. Okay. For all of sin, yep, you could start at 22. Okay. Right. Because some people, when you tell them they got to keep this commandment, they'll tell you, how can we keep the commandment? Nobody yeah. can keep the Nobody commandment. Can keep it. Yeah, we are all sinners. Yes, we are all sinners. God didn't say, as you say, He didn't make robots. Mm -hmm. He know that we are sinners. He said willful sin. Mm -hmm. You don't go there and, and sin sin willfully. Right. You don't go do something and then ask God for forgiveness and go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. And ask God for forgiveness and go back and do it again. He's not talking about, you know, if because the people sin and don't even know that they're sinning. They don't even realize that they're sinning. Yes. Your very thought can make you sin. Yes. And you know, is that another misconception, another thing um, I hear a lot of people say that um, that, that um, our, our, our forefathers, Abraham, all of them, couldn't keep the commandment. That's what they. That's what they said too. So they can't keep it. So they can't. How can they keep it if our forefathers can't, can't keep, keep it? it? If that's the way you feel. Yeah. After we read all these scriptures to you, yeah. by no means, go ahead. Because the thing is, brothers and sisters, we're not here to force to force anything on nobody. We're just here to read the scriptures and tell you what the scripture says. Yes. And that's why I tell you to get a, a, a pencil and a paper that you can jot down the scriptures. And that way you can go and read them for yourself also. So you can see it, it's coming from the scriptures. So if you're reading something for yourself and you know what it says and you will have somebody else tell you something contrary to what this says, that means you have no excuse when God, when you come before the Lord. Yes. You have no excuse. And, and, and the Lord says, 
with all you get and get understanding all you get and get understanding and so he says seek wisdom and knowledge but with all that getting get understanding and me and brother trevor the lord give us understanding and so we're here to prophesy because there's a lot of there's a lot of our israel brothers out there who don't have the understanding and so we here all we doing is prophesying we got the understanding now so we're trying to make this uh, uh, uh understandable so you understand the prophesying from this book and th that's all it comes down to and the lord give us choices either you do this or you do that and so we're not here to tell you you have to do this or you have to do that all we're doing here is giving you the understanding what the, what jesus says and it's up to you to do thus said the lord and most of these things is is self-explanatory it is we don't have to explain nothing no we just read it and we don't have to explain nothing is 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 no big words in here or, or words that you know that that we can't understand that we have to interpret the scripture the scripture it's self explanatory the scripture explains itself yeah that's why he said don't add nothing to it or don't take anything from it because it it, it, it it's self-explanatory yes, it explains itself when you start adding to it that's when you it get complicated that's right because yes. you add it to the scripture that's, that's why right. you, you start complicating the scripture yes if you leave the scriptures the way it is, the way God put it, yes. then there's no, nobody have to interpret anything for you. Yes. It's self-explanatory. That's why he said, do not add nor diminish from my word. And if you teach anyone to do so, meaning to add to his word or take away from his word, you know, you can't get into the kingdom. And that means because you're causing people to go straight head first down in the lake of fire. And he says, Whoever add to this or take away from this book, he said, he going to add the plagues of this book to your life. And so, you don't want the plagues in this book. If you ever read this book, the plagues in here, you don't want them. Well, Alright, so Romans 4, Romans 3. And 31. 22. He said, he said 22. Romans, Romans 3 and 31. Okay, so just go to 31. Okay. Yeah. All right, it says actually, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. 20, start 20, from, yeah, start from 22. Um, 23. Verse 23. 23, yeah. Verse 23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, yes, we are sinners. We are all sinners. We are born in sin. But the Bible, as, as I say, the Bible says, willful sin. There's no more sacrifice for it. Willful sin. We all are sinners. But God say, hey, you can turn away from that. You can walk straight. You can try to do your best. Repent and walk straight. And be no more stiff neck. Because, you know, he call us a generation of stiff neck people, man. Yes. You understand? It, well, it, it says, Kelroy. Hmm. It says, one have sinned. No, it says all have sinned. Three. All. Twenty. All. All. Including, all have sinned. Including both of us. All have sinned. I ain't no Prince Charles. I'm not either. Verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace uh -huh. through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being justified freely by his grace. Grace is an undeserving um, thing that God gave us. We don't deserve his grace. We don't deserve his mercy. No. None. But he gave it to us that we might have right to the kingdom, meaning that we can turn back. Because remember, if God didn't come and die for our sins, man, everybody would have been going head first in the lake of fire. We've been dead. So he had to come in order to give us grace, an undeserving thing that, that we don't deserve. You understand? Yes. So go ahead and you're going to hear what Paul says. Go ahead. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation. Propi propitiation uh -huh. to faith in his blood uh -huh. to declare his righteousness uh -huh. for the remission of sins uh -huh. that are passed to the forbearance of god right for the remission of sin that means you got to go baptize you go down under the water and come up and you got to be a new man in christ go ahead just as christ did just as christ did to declare i say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and to justify uh -huh. to justifier of him which believe it in jesus uh-huh where is boasting then uh -huh. where it, is boasting then go ahead 
it is excluded. Exactly. So I can't. Because we're all in the same boat. That's Go right. ahead. By what law uh -huh. of works? Uh -huh. Nay, but by the law of faith. Uh huh. What is faith? Faith is merely believing. believing. Go ahead. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Uh huh. Without the deeds of the law. Because remember, he says the law is in not four. the the law yes. is not for the righteous. Yes. The law is for the unrighteous. For the unrighteous. Because if you're righteous, you don't need the law. Right. Because you're walking straight. Yes. So the law is for the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? No, he's not. Go ahead. Is he not also of the Gentile? Uh-huh. Yes, of the Gentile also. Uh-huh. Seeing it is one God. One God. Go ahead. Which shall justify the circumcision uh -huh. by faith. Uh -huh. And uncircumcision un uh -huh. to faith. So the circumcision by faith, circumcision is Israel. Because Israel is the, circum the circumcised. Yes. And the, the Gentiles is the uncircumcised. Yes. So you know the, the Israelites them always calling the Gentiles them the uncircumcised. Uh -huh. Yes. That's what they mean. That's what they mean. The uncircumcised. So Israel is the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Mm -hmm. Because remember he said, through Abraham's seed will all the nation of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. Just like if, yes, if, if, I, if I adopt a child, he take on my name. He take on your name. So that's the uncircumcised. You become spiritual Israel. You become spiritual Israel. But then he have to, be, then he have to become circumcised. Yes. Because the Gentiles are the uncircumcised. Yes. And when he come into this thing, you have to be circumcised. Just as we are circumcised. Just as we are circumcised. Yes. Verse 31. Do we then make void the law to faith? No, man. He didn't say that. So did we get? Can we get rid of the law because we are we are living by faith? Just like everybody say, oh, faith, faith. I have eh? faith. So that faith. You say, me. shall we get rid of the law because we're living by faith? What he says. God forbid. God what? God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead. Yeah, we establish the law. We establish the law because we have to live by the law. You understand? Because we are none of us is righteous. No. All have sinned and, and come short so to the glory of God. We, we all. all have to live by this law. That's why he said, do we then void the law through faith? Because we are, oh, we are live by faith. He says, God forbid. So if we, we establish the law. That's right. So if we if we take the law out the way, so it's only faith we can live by? You no. cannot live by faith. No. He says, shall we live by faith alone? Yeah. He said, that's what they always say, the yeah. just shall, shall live by, by faith. faith alone. He yeah. said, faith without works, works is, is what? Dead. Faith without works is dead. You have to have works, brothers and sisters. Yes. They faith go, without works is dead. They, they go, go hand, hand, in hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Faith without works is dead. You understand? Yes. Romans 6. Go over to 6. I mean, read 1 and 2. Verse 1. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we content, continue in sin that grace may abound? Okay. So, this is the next one. Grace. Mm -hmm. Because they say we all under grace. Mm -hmm. So God came and died and now we are under grace. Mm -hmm. So what you trying to say? You're under grace. So what? That means um, you continue in sin because you're under grace? Mm -hmm. Listen to what it says here. It says, God forbid. God what? God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay. So if God came and gave his undeserving mercy, how can you continue to walk in sin how can you continue to walk in sin we can't so that's what he says he says shall what shall we say shall we continue to sin that grace may abound it says god forbid we have to live by the law we have to walk righteous upright and do what thus says the lord not what thus says the pastor or thus says the teacher or thus says the leader or the minister or the bishop or the father and by the way, brothers and sisters, we're not supposed to be calling no preacher father. Yes. There's only another, one le father. another lesson for another time. Yes. Alright? Mm -hmm. Let's go to first um first John three and four. 
So we just we just read. Shall we continue the sin that grace may abound? What is sin? We're going to go. We're going to find out what the scripture says. Yes. What sin is? Yes. We're going to tell you what the scripture say. What sin is? First John three and four. Go ahead. It says, and every man that had this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. Uh -huh. Whosoever commits sin transgressed also the law. So whosoever commits sin transgressed also the law. What's the other half? For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the breaking of the law. What law? These commandments, these statutes and judgment that he gave us. Yes everyone so if we're not living under the law or we don't have to keep the law well there's no such thing as sin there's no such thing as sin that's that means i can do what i want that's right and you can't tell me that i'm sinning uh -huh. because the book tells you sin is a transgression of the law and sin we, is the breaking of the law that means we could go we could go straight to the kingdom and we can go straight to the kingdom yes but what God said, no fool shall enter yeah, therein. <laughs> no fool. <laughs> no fool shall enter therein. Mm -hmm. And 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 what and what's a fool? Somebody who who may who, who don't make right choices. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Romans seven. We're gonna read from seven to twelve. Oh. Romans seven, seven to twelve. Romans 7, 7 to 12. 7 to 12. When you get it, you can go in. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Is the law sin? He said it again. Is the law sin? God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. <laughs> Paul said, he had not known sin, but by the law. Because so if he was, if he didn't know the law, mm -hmm. he would have just been doing things and don't know that he's, he's sinning. That's right. So, as you said before, it's not for the it's it, it's not for the righteous. The, 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 the law is not for the righteous, but the unrighteous. But the unrighteous. Go ahead. Because if you was righteous, then you don't need the law. That's right. But guess what? We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we all are unrighteous. Oh. So guess what? We all need this law. Yes. All of us. For for I had not known lust, except the law had said, "Thou shalt not covet." <laughs> so, the law, so that's how we know. That's how we know that lust is a sin. Is a sin because the law says that. Yes, and covet. Is, Which law? Is what the same law that is in this Bible? That's the same one. The same law that is in the Scripture. That's yes. how we know that that we're sinning. That we're sinning. Verse eight. But sin, taken occasion by the commandments. By the commandments. Go ahead. Wrought, wrought in me all manner of concupiscent uh -huh. concupiscent uh -huh. for without the law sin was dead for without the law sin was okay. dead because if if you don't have no no law. no law then you can't sin yeah you don't yeah go ahead for i was alive without the law once uh-huh but when the commandment came uh -huh. sin revived sin revived when the commandment <laughs> came when the law came sin sin was sin made known. Back. Sin it, made it, known. It, yeah it was made known. Because without the law there was no sin but when the law came in, that's how you know that hey, that is you sinning. And I died. And he died. The old body died. That's right. The old him. Right. That's right. So sin will kill the body. Exactly. Go ahead. Verse ten. And the commandment which was ordained to life, uh -huh. I found to be unto death. Because if you break them, you say. And the the wages of sin, sin is, is what? Debt. The wages of sin, sin is debt. And what is sin? The transgression, transgression of, of the law. That's right. The breaking of the commandments. Yeah. Right? Verse 11. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me. <laughs> and by it, it slew me. me. Wherefore the law is holy. The, the law is holy. Go ahead. And the commandment holy. The commandment is holy. Go ahead. And just. And just. And good. And bad. And good. And bad. And good. Go ahead. Verse 13. 
was then that which is good made dead unto me. Uh -huh. God forbid. Because if the commandment is good and is holy and is just, then God then, he can't then, make dead unto him. Yeah, then death won't do nothing to me. Go ahead. God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. Uh huh. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Sin by the commandments, breaking of the commandments might become exceedingly sinful. Because that's how you know you're sinning, by transgressing the law or right. breaking the law. The law. Right? Yes. You know, Revelation 22. Revelation 22 and verse 14. Brothers and sisters, this is the last book in the Bible. The last book in the Bible, which is Revelation. There is no more after Revelation 22. The last book in the Bible. And not just the last book. The last prophet wrote. The last prophet book. wrote. Okay? The last one in the Bible. And listen what it says in the last book of the Bible. Verse 14. Go ahead. And, and I'm going to read this slow so you could get every word that I said. It says, Blessed are they. Blessed are they that do his commandment. He said, Blessed are they that do his commandment. Brothers and sisters, this is the last book in the Bible. And it's telling you, Blessed are they that do his commandments. I want to say um, one thing, brother. You know, you always hear people saying, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. But you hear here, it say, If you don't do this commandment, you're not blessed. You're not blessed. He said, blessed are they that do his commandments. So if you're not doing his commandment, how are you blessed? If you're eating the pork. How are you blessed? If you're eating the catfish. How are you blessed? If you're sleeping with somebody's neighbor. How are you blessed? All of these. If you're doing all of these, you're not blessed. And then it says, that they may have right to the tree of life. And brothers and sisters, the tree of life is none other than Jesus Christ. The same tree of life that was in the Garden of Eden. That's the tree of life. He said, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have rights to the tree of life, and may enter into the through the gates of the city. That city is none other than the holy Jerusalem. Right? Understanding. And as I said, we're not here to chastise anybody. We're not here to chastise anybody because the book says, Let he who is without sin cast the first stone I am not here to throw any stone we're just here to preach the Bible or read the book or preach the scriptures so if if it fell on you whoever you are whoever you may be it's good that you take heed to it if it did not fell on you then continue doing what you're doing because all is responsible for their own salvation I can't help you I, can't, I ain't got no kingdom for you. I don't have no lake of fire for you. God does. So it will behoove you to learn this thing if you want to go into the kingdom of God and take heed of it. And if you don't want to go into the kingdom of God, continue doing what you're doing if you're not following this book. And, and, <clears throat> and if we sit here and we say that we do everything in this book, Jesus said he didn't come to condemn. So we're not condemning anybody. All we're here doing is prophesying. Jesus said to prophesy and I am brother Trevor. We are here prophesying. We just hope that you go and you take this book and you, uh, and you follow those scriptures. You go back over them. You read and try and ask Jesus to give you some edification and some wisdom and some understanding. So you could get this here so you could save your life. Because, as we said before, this is a matter of life and death. Life, life and, death. and death. Even in the physical, it's life and death when you step out your house. You don't know if tomorrow is promised to you or if it's old. You could step out there and you die and you didn't get this word to save you. So, all we're doing here, we're bringing this word to help you save yourself. I can't save you. Brother can't save you. You could only save yourself yeah. with this word. Yep. With that said, I am Brother 
Trevor Israel, this is Danny Israel, and this is the Gospel of Jesus Ministries, and we hope that you get some understanding. Peace in Jesus' name. Amen.